Rappin' with Reef Bum is sponsored by Polo Reef and Champion Lighting and Supply. Wow. So, talking about importing coral, Shane, what's going on in the exporting collecting uh, business there in Australia? What's uh, what's what's um, new? What what should we know about? Um, I'm not like the most up on it in terms of exporting wild corals, but because we solely aquaculture here, yeah, um, there is uh, so, uh, so corals are exported under CITES, um with some of you will be familiar with it's like the wildlife the global wildlife trade is regulated by CITES and um there's a new category for well newish category for exporting um uh wild oh sorry frags under an aquaculture category which hasn't previously been available and so all frags even if they were aquaculture for many 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 years were exported around the world as wild coral, which of course was skewing the numbers yeah. of how much wild coral was actually being sent out because it's a per piece basis, not a per weight or size. Right. So yeah. now that there's progression with uh, recognizing that uh, aquaculture is it's it's happening, it's a thing, it's it's going to be a very valuable part of the future and. Uh, just like uh, wild collection will be and needs to be a very valuable part of our hobby. Um, there's also new laws that are coming in and mm. permits and licensing structures that have to come in to be able to meet the criteria of what is an aquaculture coral. And you need mm -hmm. to be able to define what is aquaculture and coming with that, means there's a traceability system and the traceability system is what is causing uh well i believe it's just going to be it, it's a huge headache and it's going to be very messy for anyone that is aquaculturing corals um for example we're trialing some methods now uh to make sure our our systems are all ready for when this comes in as a There'll be grace periods and all this kind of stuff, but it's rolling through quite fast. Uh, a few permits have been issued already to to uh, export under this new category for aquacultured coral. Um, but the coding, like the, the the mother corals need to be coded, the frags need to be coded. Everything has to have a barcode, an ARFID chip, a tag or something. Um, ours are gonna be handwritten for a while until we figure out what's going on. We think that because we've done a RFID chip trial on the farm with fisheries, the the fisheries are, I'm guessing you've got a similar type body that regulates recreational and commercial fishing and stuff. Um, we did that with them and sort of trialed RFID chips here. It is incredibly time consuming, very <laughs> expensive and just a headache. Like it's so, in my opinion, it's not, necessary but it is because we've got to push forward and we've got to do what is required to keep that aspect going um but yeah so in the next few years don't be surprised if your frags are coming through with numbers on the bottom um because <laughs> that's the way price increase, or, chip. or chips or microchips embedded into the frag plug or something like this because oh that's God. what's coming <laughs> it's Jane, coming is, is that the 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 need to RFID chip your frags if you're aquaculture, is that specifically for exported corals only? Like iFrag, is Gallery Aquatica going to need one of these RFID chip maker thingies? I don't know. As uh, There's even, uh, this is where Lyle would come in and there's a few other ind industry people that are much more up in it than I am. But yeah, I'm just trying to keep my head down and bum up and frag and keep <laughs> stock to everything. But there are, and, and just doing the bare minimum necessary to keep things going and making sure that we are getting these permits and 
yeah. whatnot. But because there's like multiple different companies that are doing the fragging and aquaculture, we're all using our own traceability systems, mm -hmm. which won't fly very soon. That's just that there's no way known that the government's going to say you can do this yeah. and you can do that. It will end up being a centralized type thing that everyone's going to have to do that. Um, and whether that flows onto aquarium stores, I'm not sure. But um, hmm. it that's that's not in my hands, or yeah, that's up to what they do. But yeah, it's it's, a, it's an interesting time, um, and now that the why it's all happening. It, it, on a store level or a hobbyist level, it would seem pretty unreasonable for someone to require a permit or a license to frag their, you know, Montipora that's growing out of control oh, yeah. or whatever. That I, yeah. I really yeah. hope not. But yeah. but if, if you think back to yeah. what, hap what happened with the reptiles and the illegal trade of reptiles and how unregulated reptiles were, the government yes. just went like this and you have a reptile permit now and everything is categorised and all done online with reptiles for the Australian hobby of reptile keeping, I would I would okay. shudder and I dread the day that if that ever happens with coral. It, yeah. it terrifies me, to be honest. That actually terrifies me to have a, a hobbyist permit to keep coral. But the Australian government is a nanny state and <laughs> they want... Their fingers in everything we do. So, 